Hey, what is up, everybody? Michael Crump back here again, talking about the latest and the greatest in PlayStation homebrew news and much, much more. So it's been a little under two weeks, and I have been away. Obviously, I've been taking care of my dad, and he is doing much better as of today. So now I am back, and I am ready to jump in to the latest and the greatest in PlayStation Homebrew news. So let's just go ahead and get started. Okay, so the very first thing that I wanted to mention here is that there is another potential vulnerability to the free BSD system, which is what is underlying operating system for the PlayStation 5. Now, it says right here, it says that the version of free BSD installed on the remote host is prior to the tested version. It is therefore affected by a vulnerability as referenced in this advisory. It says that the AIO AQ function used by the system call fails to release a reference to a credential in an error case. An attacker may cause the reference count to overflow leading to another use after free case. Now, this is, again, very similar to what we just had with the IPv6 use after free. And right now, at least as of this moment, I haven't really seen anything that looks like it may come out of this. But it's still another good thing just to kind of know about that is available. Now, Obviously, what we would like to do with this is we'd like to be able to potentially chain this with a number of other exploits in order to get some sort of a jailbreak out of it. But right now, this is just another good one to kind of keep on your radar for another potential free BSD vulnerability that could affect the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 5. Next up, since I haven't been able to play God of War, I thought I would at least mention some of the new stuff that I've seen with God of War. So there is a bunch of new God of War Ragnarok icons that you can download here. Actually, these came out right around November the 9th, so close to after the game came out, but I just haven't been able to cover it just yet. So if you use any sort of icon mask or tool such as that that Lappy created, you can come in here and you can customize those icons a bit more. Next up, over on Orbis Patches, they added the ability to be able to see things such as the total titles that they have, uh, as well as the total patches, total patch pieces, and then the current highest title ID. So if you aren't familiar with this, this is Orbis Patches. And from here, you basically can make a search for a PlayStation game and it will tell you what is the most recent patch for it. You can also download that patch and they also have another one that is over here in Prospero patches. Actually, this was Orbis patches. I don't know if I said that correctly or not, but Prospero patches covers the PlayStation 5 game patches. Now, one thing again to keep in mind is, is that we're not able to apply those PlayStation 5 game patches in the same manner that we are on the PlayStation 4. So if you have a PlayStation 5 game disc, you won't be able to just come over here, download the patch, and then apply it to your system. There is a couple of other things that's involved, and at least to my knowledge as of this moment, there isn't a good way to get updates for your PlayStation 5 games. Next up, I wanted to mention that I released this video before I left, and this was unlocking a number of PS4 game patches, such as 60 frames per second, a skip intros, with the latest Goldian version 2.2.5b7. While this is absolutely a great video that you can go and check out, what I did do was I came back in and I added a link to the test.prx that I mentioned here into this video. The one that I was using when I originally talked about this didn't quite work, but obviously the new one, which again I've linked to in here, works perfectly well. And then we have a, another way that we are able to dump PlayStation 5 games. Now, this comes the way of Logic 68, and it's called PFS Mount Dumper. And it says it is able to dump the raw data from the title ID, 
which is the app zero and the patch zero for a PlayStation 5 game. Now, before I talk about this, I did want to mention that this is basically just a port of the PS4 app dumper that we had, you know, back on the PlayStation 4. So the PS4 app dumper, what it basically does is, is that you plug in a USB external hard disk drive to the back of your PlayStation 5, or in this instance, your PlayStation 4, or the front of your PlayStation 4. And what it does is, is it will take any of the running games and it will dump that entire game over to your hard disk drive where if you wanted to maybe create like a fake package, etc., you could do that. Now, over here with Logic 68, this is basically that same exact thing where you can plug in an external USB drive to the back of your PlayStation 5 where you're able to get some of the speed coming from the 3.0 ports that's on the back and you would be able to open an application or open a game, for example, and it would dump the app zero and if there was a patch over to that USB external hard disk drive. So this was released right around three days ago. You may look right here and you may see that there are no releases available. And that is correct. They're actually over here on this mega.nz link. And if we go ahead and we download that and we open that up, basically you'll see that there is a readme in here and then there is a PFS MNT dumper app zero patch zero dot L file. So once you run the WebKit exploit for your PlayStation 5, you would just send over this L file right here. Now I did go ahead and open up the readme.md. And again, this is really the same sort of thing that we just talked about just a moment ago. And one other thing that I would add to this is, is that it may take a little bit of time before you see anything on screen that shows that the app or the game is copying over. So look at the LED lights on your hard disk drive or your USB external hard disk drive to kind of see what's going on. But usually every, I think maybe 15%, you'll start to see a pop-up notification on your PlayStation 5 that shows kind of where it's at. But at least initially at the beginning, it may take a while before you start seeing any sort of activity happening. And then finally, we got a bit of an update over here by John Tornblum. And what we really got was two different things. Number one, there was an enable debug menu. So now in order to get the debug menu, traditionally on the PlayStation 5, you had to run the WebKit exploit. Now you're able to use BD-J. And here you can get the debug menu once you insert a disk. Now, there are a number of instructions on how to create an ISO, and I'll talk about that a bit more in a moment. But then there was also the ability to send over JAR files. So traditionally, we have been sending over L files or payloads that were L files. Now you can use JAR files which is another added feature to doing that. There is a number of different samples on how to use both of those. And I am aware that there is also this link over here on Mediafire. I believe this originally came out by Modded Warfare. And if you download this, then as you can see here, you will have a couple of different ISOs just ready to go. So the very first one, will be for the PS5 kernel data dump. So this would allow you to dump your kernel data as well as it would give you your debug settings. The second ISO image here is the PS5 jar loader. So this would allow you to send jar files or jar payloads in order for the PlayStation 5 to run them on the system. There was also in here a other sample code on how to just send kind of a hello world over there to it. So again, over the last couple of weeks, there has been some movements and there has been progress that is being made in the PlayStation 5 scene. Well, anyway, I can't wait to keep up to date a little bit closer now that I'm able to focus in a little bit more and share all of that information with you all. Thank you so very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Michael 
Ow! 